Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to be talking about the concept of solubility and we're going to use that to help us hopefully make some uh, rock candy. The main concept for today is that there's a limit as to how much solute can dissolve into a solution and you can change that amount by changing the temperature. To review we need to take a look at what is a solution. So a solution is anytime you have a solvent and a solute. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to use water as my solvent. Water is considered to be a universal solvent. We're going to use salt as my solute. Anytime you take a solute and put it in a solvent, so in this case if I put the salt in the water, the solvent or the water particles are able to pull the solute apart and it will dissolve. And in this case, salt is made up of sodium ions and chloride ions. And when we go in there, the water's got a little bit of a charge to it and it pulls them apart and they evenly spread uh, into the solution. Now, this is a physical change and we can undo this because it hasn't disappeared, it hasn't chemically changed. We can undo it if we just evaporated the water and the salt would recrystallize. And we did that in a previous video that we watched on mixture separation. Now, you also know that there's a limit. If I keep adding more salt to this, there's going to be a spot where it can't dissolve anymore. And we call this saturated okay so a solution is saturated if you can't fit any more into it and the reason I know it's saturated is if I look at this right now get it there's still a little bit of salt floating on the bottom and there's just no more room at this point for that salt to further separate out like it's reached its limit but what we can do is we can add more water to this and we can make the solution what we call unsaturated now, unsaturated just means that there's more room or you could dissolve in. And we know it's unsaturated because if we take a look at it now, there's no more salt sitting on the bottom. Yeah. Scientists call this maximum amount of stuff that can dissolve into a solvent solubility. Here's a graph that shows the different types of solutes can dissolve in water. If you see, the lines are curving, and so we often refer to this as a solubility curve. You'll also notice that for most of the time, as the temperature increases, it can hold more solute. So in short, the higher the temperature, the more solute can dissolve or the higher the solubility. Now you've probably encountered this before if you've ever tried to make instant hot chocolate and you use cold water instead of hot. You try and put it in there and unfortunately what happens is the hot chocolate just doesn't dissolve. I should also note that this is really only true for solids and liquid solutes. Gases are kind of like the exact opposite. Here's a graph showing it for gases. You can see that the higher the temperature goes, there's less gas than can dissolve. And this just has something to do with how the gas is actually dissolved into the liquid. But it can have a huge impact on aquatic creatures such as fish. If the water temperature gets too high due to say climate change or if it's near a power plant, even if there isn't pollution going into the water, the water can just get too hot and then therefore there's not enough dissolved oxygen in there and so the fish can't survive. So let's review right now. The higher the temperature, the higher the solubility for solids and liquids, but the higher the temperature, the lower the solubility of gases. If you can still fit more solute into a solution, we call it unsaturated, but if it's completely full, we call it saturated, and you'll know that because you'll see little bits of stuff sitting down on the bottom. Now, as it turns out, there's a third type of solution, and it is called supersaturated. And this is where you do something where you force more than the maximum amount of solute into the solution. Um, so on that graph again, it would be on an area above where you saw that line. Uh, Supersaturated solutions are really unstable, meaning that if you bump them or just add like a single crystal to them, they will completely recrystallize out. All of that extra stuff falls out of solution and it just goes uh, like gangbusters on there. I can't really do it at home. Uh, I don't have the stuff to do it. If we were at school, you can. So I'll put a link in the video here showing you some videos of people that were able to do the uh, supersaturated solutions. All right. So that's solutions aside. So how does this then relate to um, making rock candy? The idea is, is that we would heat up the water, put a ton of sugar in there, and then let the solution cool down. And then when we let the solution cool down, we would take these little sticks that we had put a little bit of sugar on, uh, let the solution cool. And remember, as the solution is cooling, the um, solute is going to start coming out of solution and need to go somewhere else. By having the stick in there, the idea is that that, that sugar can then redissolve onto the stick and we'd be able to get the rock candy. So go ahead, you can watch the, uh, the video here on, on how we were doing it. We have the solution that's completely full. 
But what we need to do is create a spot for the candy to actually recrystallize on these bamboo skewers. So we're gonna start with a little bit of sugar already on them so that when it does cool, it cools on here as opposed to the sides of the jar on the bottom. All right, that's probably good. How many should we do? Um, let's do four, because we only have four jars. Four jars? Do you think we could do more than one in one jar? We can try. As an experiment, right? Let's try. Alright, so there we go. We got our four jars made. We're just gonna have to let these sit for uh, a while until it cools off. We'll probably have to check in on them tomorrow and uh, we'll pick up at the next part. So here we are. It's the next day, the next morning. We've let these things sit overnight, so maybe about 12 hours. Uh, we have different amounts of crystal uh, formation showing up on these. Now remember the point for this was last night the water in here was really hot, so the solubility was quite high. As it sat out overnight, the solubility lowered and the sugar wasn't able to stay dissolved. So there wasn't able to hold as much solute and that solute had to come out of solution. So it's recrystallized. This, this one has turned out quite well for me, actually. It's probably the one that's got the most crystal growth on the stick right there. And uh, so we're quite happy about that one. Now, everything we've been reading says that you need to let this sit for a few more days. Unfortunately, in order to get this video out in time, uh, I probably won't be able to show you the full results but we are gonna let them sit a little bit more. Uh, if you wanted to try this at your house, I would just say make sure you really dissolve uh, a lot of sugar into that water. Um, I started at a two to one ratio, so two cups of sugar for one cup of water. I think I need to go up closer to three. And uh, just take your time and be patient with it. I'll link in the video uh, how where we got the recipe for this one. So, so there you go. We were using a solubility and the concept that at higher temperatures you can hold more and at lower temperatures you can hold less to do something practical um, such as make rock candy. I hope you enjoyed and we'll talk to you later.